Good evening, everyone. Will you guys stand with us? Welcome, welcome, everyone here in the building and online. We are so glad to have you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, Lord. We just thank you that we get to come to you, our King. Lord, we just submit our hearts to you, Father, in worship. Together, we worship you. We love you in Jesus' name.
my fears and doubts They can all come to Precious blood of Christ. 
accepted by you, God. But it is only through faith that we are accepted by you, Jesus. We thank you for your blood. That because of what you did on the cross, we are now new in you, God. We love you, Jesus. He has teeth. 
He has teeth, okay? Amen. He is dangerous when he's fighting against Satan for us. Amen. Amen. I, I, I've watched these uh, shows on TV or whatever, movies or something, and you'll see this guy that's nobody, and he's just acting like he's, he's said, come and take me, come and take me. And there's like 10 guys in front of him, fixing to run him down. And all of a sudden, they turn around and start running away. <laughs> well, look at what I just did. He didn't see Arnold Schwarzenegger standing behind him with a big old machine gun, you know. He didn't see all of that. That's my Jesus standing behind me when I need to fight against Satan. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. I don't know why there's not any praise reports on here. What happened? Somebody just forgot to tell us. I know that's true. Amen. We do have prayer requests tonight. Uh, Joe Keating has a prayer, asked for prayer for a co-worker. Uh, Aaron Garza, he's having family trouble with a teenage daughter. Uh, Teresa Laura has asked that we pray for Zeke's teacher, Mrs. Smith. She was in a car accident. Pray for complete healing. Here it says it's a miracle that she is alive. God is a miracle working God. He's our protector. Uh, they started doing uh, recently this week dialysis on my son to try to get uh, fluid off of him. And uh, we ask that he pray that this takes enough fluid on his body so that his, his breathing and his heart will function properly. And they had to stop in the middle of it yesterday because I guess they was doing too much or they was taking out toxins and fluid and he was cramping all over his whole complete body and they stopped because they was getting they should have been watching closer or something but but god has got his hand on him he's better and amen and, and he's healed in the name of jesus janice timon asked that we pray for uh, her widow's sister-in-law she's having tr trouble breathing and is tired all the time pray for her that that she'd get her oxygen, better oxygen level and the doctors have wisdom and take care of her. Colleen Harris would like for us to pray for her mom, Barbara. She's experiencing PHN, which is the painful effects of shingles. And it causes her to have uncontrollable nerve pain and urges to scratch the most affected area on the side of her face and ear. And so that the says they are praying there will be no long-term effects. Kathy Ridley asked that we pray for Hallie. Uh, she's a, a victim of domestic violence, and she showed up at uh, up at work one day last week with a black eye, and just pray for God's love and care over the situation. And uh, Irina's cousin, whose name is Ron Chor Charles, uh, he had a bad tooth removed today, is in a lot of pain. I kind of chuckled, but that's nothing to chuckle about. But uh, pray that uh, God will touch his body and heal him. Uh, Tim Twitchell asked for prayer for a new friend, Panul Shanid and her family. Her father just passed away from COVID in India pray for all the family during this time of mourning. Tim's also asked that we pray for a friend, Brad Lewis. Uh, Brad texted him that his sister Diane had been taken to the hospital with chest pains. And Fabian asked that we pray for his son, Josh, that he be tested, that he tested positive for COVID. And also uh, Fabian asked that we pray that he and Yvette and Abby and Edgar do not get it. And there's others in our church that are are going through uh, some trying times with their health at the moment, and God is in complete, absolute control of all of this, and He will take care of His own. Amen. Let's let's stand and take these needs to the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight that uh, that you are Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider, you are our healer, Lord. Lord, that you take care of us, Lord, and when we come to you, the throne of grace. Lord, that you hear our prayers. Jesus, you took the stripes on your back so that we could be healed. And there's a lit, on this list, there's a lot of people that has physical ailments today. And some of them, Lord, they will never get better unless you move on their bodies, Lord. And I know you did not shed your blood 
in vain or take the stripes on your back in vain, Lord. Lord, you did it for us, Lord. We did not deserve it, but you did it for us because you loved us so much. And Father, I just ask God that you would meet the needs of each and every person on this list. God, that, that you would just be with them and heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. It's offering time. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you one. For those of you who are giving online, please use our church website or our app in your giving. Thank you. How many of y'all know angels have a lot to do with our prosperity? They play a big role in our covenant prosperity. Share a couple of scriptures with you concerning that as you are prepare your offering tonight. Psalms 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now let's connect that scripture with uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, because these are connected. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? That's talking about you and I. We're heirs of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing. Your angel is waiting on you to put words of the covenant in your mouth so that he can bring about your divine prosperity. Amen. The blessing of Abraham depends on you and I speaking the word of God consistently Amen. over our lives where prosperity is concerned. Let's put that to work tonight. Stand to your feet. We'll make our offering confession and we'll put our angels to work. Lord, I worship you with my tithe and my offering. I thank you for bringing me out of bondage into blessings. I believe I'm now free from poverty and lack. Everything I put my hands to prospers. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Lord, let the ministering spirits be released. Let them gather in my harvest now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you in your giving tonight. Praise God. Amen. Um, could we start with the um, Isaiah 50, please? The Lord God has given me the tongue of the land that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the land. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did it turn away. Amen. I welcome everybody here this evening. I welcome everybody online and who will listen to this later on. I just want to start with an opening prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this moment. Precious Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and be in our midst as you're already here and minister to our spirits. Open our ears and eyes and our hearts to hear this word and may it be planted on fertile soil. And Lord, may you do the rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank the choir so much. It was an amazing worship moment for me this evening. I don't know about everybody else. They took my sermon from the very first song, <laughs> The Lion of Judah. And then it went on to the next part where we're going to go. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh my goodness. And while I was still in awe of him, they said, his blood rewrites our history. Oh my goodness. If I needed a confirmation, that was it. So, um, the word I want to share with you today, the title of the message is, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And um, <clears throat> I'll just quickly tell you where we're going to go with it. I'm going to start by talking about Jesus Christ. 
the Lamb of God to take away all our sins. And then we're going to go into um, our helper, the precious Holy Spirit. And then we're going to go to the part where Jesus prays for all the believers before he ascends into heaven. And then we're going to talk about the two greatest commandments. And then we're going to talk about answered prayer and the great commission. So I'm excited. I hope it will bless you all. It sounds like a lot, but the Holy Spirit is here. And we're going to get this done. And it's going to go into all our hearts. It's for me and you. So the first scripture I have is John 1, 1 to 5. And it says, in the beginning was the word. Before I read the rest of it, I'd like us to all, where you see the word, can you put Jesus Christ there? And it will make sense afterwards. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So, Jesus Christ, the Word, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the light of the world, and he walked so many years ago on the world, but they did not perceive him and we still carry on his message and we will continue to do it till the end of time um, one of the most interesting scriptures I saw when I was trying to when I was preparing for this message is um, the psalmist talked about the word of God and he went on to say forever O Lord your word is settled in heaven so it just shows you how powerful the word of God is. You know, it's settled in heaven. Everything in our Bibles is already settled. He only asks us to believe. That's all. Everything was finished at the cross. So what I want to think about the word, I, um, I'm just going to give you, um, should I say, An example of where I'm going with this. So imagine two dogs are fighting in a ring. Which dog is going to win more? Is it going to be the dog that's fed more or the dog that's starved more? We know who's going to win the fight. So if you take that and place it into this, what I'm going to say, like your spirit and your flesh. If you feed your flesh more than you feed your spirit, when there's a battle going on in your heart, in your mind, who's going to win? Whoever you feed more. And when we talk about feeding, we're talking about feeding our spirits with the word of God. Every day. You know, when I was so little in Sunday school, there's a song that we used to sing. I don't know if anybody knows it. It's called, I won't sing it because it's read your Bible and pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible and pray every day if you want to grow. Yay, you know it? <laughs> but do you see, we were so little singing these words, but do you know how significant they are and how real it is? Just remember to read your Bible and pray every day and you will grow your spirit will grow stronger and stronger. I'm not saying we should starve our flesh, we should eat our normal meals, but remember to feed your spirit. Nobody reminds you to have your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. You don't just go to bed and say, oh, today I was super busy, I didn't get time to eat. Think about your spirit, you know? Think about the word of God. And the more you spend time in the word, it will stay on the inside of you. If anything happened in the heat of the moment, before you even cry out, even before fear has a chair in your heart, the first thing is going to be, 
do not be afraid. I am with you always. You know, if you see somebody sick, before you even start thinking of how are they going to get better, you're going to remember, by his stripes, we are healed. And we all, it's, there's so many examples I can give you, but it's just, that's just, you know, picking out a few. When you don't know what you're going through and it's tough, you will remember he's your shepherd. You shall not want for anything. And that word is settled in heaven. So that's how important the word of God is. Um, I also enjoyed the psalmist when he said, oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation all day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. Can you imagine just that sentence? It means so much. I see a smile. <laughs> and um, I have so... Then the next one I wanted to share is, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Re your word revives me, O Lord, according to your word. So... It, just, it doesn't just only protect us, it revives your spirit. And David was a man after God's very own heart. But when you read the Psalms, you can see how passionate, how driven he was. And that should be for us as well. I pray that's for everybody as well. Um, I'd like to share John 4.13. I'm going to read it out. He also goes on to say in his word that whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. He, Jesus was talking about the water that the lady at the well was drinking. But he goes on to say, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never thirst. But the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Can you imagine never being thirsty again? Just living on the word of God. Um, the more time we spend in his word, it's for us. You know, it's everything and it's for us. And the times we're living in, we need to have the word on the inside. You know, let's read the word every day that we get to a point. You don't really have to remember where it is, but you know what he said. And the Holy Spirit is so patient and loving. He reminds you. He will bring the scriptures to you. He's our helper. So um, I'm still talking about the word of God. And then um, I have a, another verse I wanted to share with you where Jesus was saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. So not only does the word apply for here and now, it goes all the way to eternity. So I cannot say how important or how it helps us more than anything to know the word of God. Let's read our Bibles and pray every day. If you don't know that song, I pray it stays with you today and every other day of your life. Just remember, read your Bible and pray every day. And before you read your Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to come into your presence. As you're reading the Bible, he will reveal things to you in ways you'd never seen them or understood them before. And there's some scriptures we read that sometimes don't make sense. But when you're with the Holy Spirit as you read, he will interpret it for you. He will show you. God is a spirit. We worship him in spirit and in truth. And he speaks to us in his word. His word is life. So how can we say we want to hear from God and we're not reading his word? Um, the next part I'm going to go to is um, our precious helper, our Holy Spirit. I hope everybody has read Pastor Goodluck's book, The Language of Heaven. Um, if you haven't, I really encourage you to read that book. If you've read it before, read it again. Every time you read it, you get something nice out of it. Before Jesus, um, when he was ascending in heaven, in, um, that's John 16, verse 7. 
He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. You see, that had to seal everything he did. The Holy Spirit was coming down to us. Um, the next scripture I want to read with you is John 16, 13 to 15. And that says, however, he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. How amazing is that? You know, we have questions in our lives. We need to learn to ask the Holy Spirit. That's where we need to start. You know, when you have all these questions or life decisions, ask him. I encourage you, he will speak. He will guide you. Sometimes you won't initially know what he's saying, but the path you take, if you go the wrong way, he will bring you back. And he, he's, that just says it all. I can't add anything to that. We need to learn to ask for the Holy Spirit to help us. Welcome him in our hearts. Because if we go back to the garden in Eden, when um, God told Adam, if you eat this fruit, you will surely die. He wasn't talking about his flesh. He was talking about his spirit. Because if you remember in the garden, in Genesis, we read how he spent time with God and he was talking to God. But when he ate the fruit, they ran away and they, you know, he called, where are you? As soon as they ate it, the spirit died immediately. But the flesh was still alive. But God is God all by himself. He had a plan. So he sent his son, the Lamb of God that takes away all our sins. He died on the cross. And before he ascended into heaven, he said, "My Holy, the Holy Spirit will come down. And that's why when we get born again, um, I have it somewhere. When we get born again, the word of God says, unless you get born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. That's the scripture I'm talking about. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our flesh is already here, but your spirit gets born again. But when your spirit is born again, you need to have the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. So you pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you. And when he fills you, you become one with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope I'm making sense. So when you're in one with God, you get to hear him. You fellowship with him. You become friends. He calls us his friends. That's how you get to interact with him. And even when we leave this world, we're going to be spirit. So our flesh is the shell we're in. But the real you is your spirit. So you need to learn how to hear from God. You need to learn how to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's just as I read before, he reveals things before they happen. He will guide you. So basically, we have everything we need. We just need to ask him and believe and receive him. So... Um, I'd like to share Corinthians 1. It's, you don't have to put it up. It's talking about the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you do not know that, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 
So we're his temple. You know, just in your heart, who is reigning in your spirit? That's just a hypothetical question, you know. It's something you can think about later. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? That's some, if, and if you're not, it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, and when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, we have lovely gifts he places in us. We have the language of heaven. How powerful is speaking in tongues? It's a free gift God has given us. And the Holy Spirit also intercedes on our behalf. So we have, it was all done. It's settled. And sometimes, I don't know about you, I pray and ask God for some things and I just, sometimes I think, he's already done it. Why don't you just praise him? Praise him because you know he's already done it. And while you're praising him, when it happens, you're not going to get surprised and say, oh, he did it. You're just going to know he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Um, there's a long time ago, I read an email from a friend. It was just going, it was a forward. It was a, I don't remember the story very well. You might have heard of it, so I'm going to just try and break it down to what I remember. There's a college kid who graduated and he wanted a car. So he asked his dad, um, I want a car for my graduation. That's what he told him. And the dad, you know, he was very hardworking. He had saved some money. So he went to a dealership. He paid the full price of the car. And then he got a Bible and he put the key in the Bible. And then he put it on his son's, um, on his dresser when, after on the graduation day. So the son came home and he said, but dad, I wanted a car. And the dad said, I got you a Bible. Because he knew when he opens the Bible to read, if he was reading his Bible, he'll find the key. So the son was so upset and he just discarded the Bible. And time went past, he went to college, he was so upset, his dad didn't get him the car. He, you know, he would, there was a big rift in between them. But of course he moved on, life went on. The Bible stayed in his room. But when his dad passed away, the son came back home to clear out the house. And he was going through everything. And the Bible slipped, you know, on the floor and he opened it up. He saw a key and the name of the dealership. This was so many years later on. So he calls the number of the dealership and says, there's a key here and the Bible. But lucky enough, the, gent the salesman who sold the car to the dad was still there. And he said, I remember that gentleman. I remember the name. He bought a car for his son, but he never picked it up. He's been here all these years. Can you imagine? The dad is so patiently, and he kept asking him, do you read your Bible? He says, yes, I do, but he was still upset about that. Sometimes, do we do that in our lives? You know, you, God has given us everything we need. And we, we can't understand on our own. But we can ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, to reveal to us, and to live in us and fill us so we can come to the point where we know our God is the Lion of Judah. He is the great I Am. He is the King of Kings. He loves us with an everlasting love. There's nothing we could do to make him love us more. He loves us. So, um, I am John does tell us as well what I just said. But you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. That's in John 1 John 2, 27. So he's our teacher as well. He's so many things to us. But you have received the Holy Spirit. I'll read it out. And he lives within you. So you do not need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything. I will emphasize everything we need to know. And what he teaches us is true. It's not a lie. So just as he, taught, just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship 
with Christ. So that shows us how important the Holy Spirit is. And um, if you don't know or you're not sure, ask him. Ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit into your heart. You know, it's such a shame if you're walking with God and you, you can't speak in tongues. The language of heaven, it's the key to the kingdom. It is very important. I don't know, but I'm sure you've all experienced this. Sometimes you pray in tongues and the next day, the way everything happens, you know a door has been opened, but I didn't actually ask for this. But when you pray in tongues, I hope the Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf. You speak in the language of heaven. And we can also go another step and ask God to teach us how to interpret the tongues. He can do that. If you're interested, you ask him. Everything that we want and need is already available for us. So we just need to tap into what he has given us. Um, the next part I'm going to is when Jesus prays for all the believers before he ascends into heaven. And the scripture I want to share is John 17, 1 to 3. Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. Can you have a mental picture of this moment? You know, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You know, the Lord taught us the Lord's Prayer, but his burning need to the Father was that we may know him. Do you know God? Do you really know him? You know, the word says, um, there's a word in the Bible where he says, some of you will call out my name and I will say, I do not know you. Do you know him? That was the prayer Jesus prayed. And I think that there's so much in that prayer for us to just to know God and be one with him. Um... Jesus also said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Sanctify them with your truth and your word. So, this shows us that we're going to have tough times. He didn't say, Lord, may nothing happen. He said, keep them from evil. Keep them from evil. And our Lord's prayer also says that. He will keep you from evil. Resist the devil and he will flee. Let's seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto us. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. If you remember, he led Jesus into the wilderness. And he was tested. But he overcame. So that, that just goes to show you sometimes we'll go through things in our lives that are tough. We'll go through things we can't understand. Some things we'll never know what the answers are till we meet him. But what you should always remember, what you need to know, God will let you know. And if he hasn't told you or showed you, you don't need to know. Trust him. Blind faith. Trust him with all your inner being. He's faithful. He is faithful to the end. Um, I also want to share 
John 17, 22. And it says, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. We're a church, the Ark Fellowship. Let's be one in Christ. The only thing that matters most importantly as we come together as believers is unity and love. Those who were on the telephone conference last night, pastor talked about unity as a church and I thought I hope he's not going with my message again. <laughs> but it's important. You know, we need to learn to pick our battles. Our whatever we believe in, whatever you think is right or wrong, let God be God. Let's be one body, one voice with Christ in us, spirit filled. And when we take care of God's business, he takes care of the rest. So let's be one in Christ. So I'm going to the, greater, the two greatest commandments that sum up all the Ten Commandments. How are we doing with time? Okay. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Um, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That's everything. I don't think he left anything out. Do you love God or do you love what God can do for you? Do you love the blessing or the hand that blesses you? You know, and um, if you don't know whether you love him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Do you know it's okay to ask him to teach you how to love him? You know, God has a love language. Couples have love languages. Some people love flowers. Some people like chocolate. Some people, you know, you feel what makes you, you know, it depends. I was listening to a testimony of a couple. The wife liked to spend time with her husband, quality time. The husband liked to prepare meals for her. She was upset because he was so busy, but he was never there. But when he was there, he'd bring her breakfast in bed and do everything, but she was not happy because her language was quality time. So the gentleman was in the shower and was telling God, today we're going to have it out. I'm going to, I made a breakfast. I told her I'm going to the office and she's upset. And the Holy Spirit just came down and said, her language is quality time. And he went and apologized to his wife. She actually broke down and cried. It was a lovely testimony. I watched it on the TV. And he realized that was her language. But where I'm going with this, God's love language. Number one, fellowship. He needs you to fellowship with him. Number two, the word. He needs you to spend time in the word. And he needs you to love him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. So if you're saying you love God, but you have no time to fellowship with him, he's speaking a different language. You can serve everywhere in the church. You can volunteer and do everything you need to do. But he needs your heart to fellowship with him. He needs you in the word you know, um, there's a lot to learn, but every day we learn something new. And we're here, so we still have time to catch up on what we need to do. So let's learn to speak God's love language. Let's love him with everything in our hearts. Um, just take some time to say, this week, I'm not going to ask you for anything. I just want to worship you. Just worship him. And when you're worshiping him, I'm sure you've had this. God answers prayers you've not even asked for. So you're busy fellowshipping with him. And he says, okay, I need to take care of this. I need to take care of that. He has got you. 
in the palm of his hands. He knows what you need before you even ask him. He sees what you can't see. So let's fellowship with him. He longs to hear from you. He knows what you're going through, but he wants to hear it in your words, from your experience. Just spend time with him. We want to spend eternity with him. If we can't spend time with him here, what are we going to do in heaven? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 1 Kings 2, 4. When David was um, leaving the throne to Solomon, one of the last few things he said to him, he said that the Lord may fill his word. It's, I just took it out of the whole context, but I just wanted to get the point there about the heart, how important the heart is. So he said that the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me. Okay, I'll start from here. He says, if you do this, he was talking to Solomon, then the Lord will keep the promise that he made to me. He told me that if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully in truth with all their hearts and soul, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Do you see how important that was? That was a condition he told David. If you just... Follow me faithfully. Fellowship with me. One will always sit on the throne. So our heart is important. It needs to be one with God. What are you thinking? What's in your heart? You know you need to think about what you think about. Because your thoughts are louder than your words sometimes. Sometimes we don't know what's going on, we're talking, we're doing other things, but your heart, God sees your heart. So what are your thoughts in your heart? So if you, it's something you can do, you can just do a spiritual checkup. What are you thinking? Think about what you're thinking about. Are you worrying a lot? Are you entertaining fear all the time? Um, is there pride in your heart? Pride doesn't, on the, when you just look at pride, you don't, sometimes we underestimate pride. You know pride is why the devil fell out of heaven. Pride. He wanted to be God. And he knows what it did to him. So he knows how to use it. Project it. Keep pride out of your heart. It can creep in. By the time you start to deal with it, he's comfortable. And that's not a very good place. But there's small things that we keep in our hearts. You need to check your heart. Is there any unforgiveness? You know, some people are so upset with people, they don't talk. And so many years later, they're still not talking, but they can't remember why they fell out. That's really sad. You know, let's learn to love, forgive, clean our hearts. You can't go to God with a heart filled with all the wrong stuff. You're thinking something else and you're talking something else. God hears your thoughts. So align your thoughts with your words and fellowship with him. Um, going to answered prayer, which is the last section. John 14 verse 12. Um, Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. You see where our answered prayers are? Right here. He says, I will do it. 
whatever you're struggling with today. I'm going to ask God to use my voice. Let me speak to your spirit. God will do it. Whatever it is, no matter how big, no matter how small, our God is bigger than life. He is more than able to do immeasurably more than you could ever hope for or imagine. So let's not let these distractions, we call them problems, I call them distractions, distract us from our God. Um, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20 says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, be, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, even to the end of age. His word is settled in heaven. I cannot add anything to this. Um, we've been hearing about the Great Commission. We had a lovely message last Wednesday teaching us how to do it. We'll continue to practice, but let's do what he asked us to do. In Christ we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. May God fill you with everything of him in your spirit. May he breathe his breath into you. May he revive you. May his word wash you as white as snow. And I would like to end with my favorite scripture for you this evening. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It's not dishonest. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love rejoices in truth. Always loves, protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love never fails. God loved his son so much. He loved the world so much as well. But he sent his son to the world he loves. And whoever believes in him will have eternal life. So he's given us the keys to the kingdom. Let's love him with everything in our beings. Let's learn to walk with him every day. And most importantly, I pray that what you take this evening is the word of God. May God's word fill you. May you spend time in his word every day of your lives. Because that's what it's all about. And share what you have with his people. Um, I think I have come to the end of my message. And I pray that it blesses each and every one of you. If I may close in a prayer, I pray that um, I know the Holy Spirit is here with us. But let's learn to ask for his help. Father in heaven, I just worship you this evening and praise you. Because you alone are God. And there is none like you. If there's anything in our hearts that's not of you, Lord, please forgive us and cleanse us. If there's anybody listening who doesn't know you, Father, I pray, Lord, that they may turn to you. May you make them, may they make you their Lord and Savior. Because your word says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So if you're listening and you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, you can say this in your heart. Father, I am sorry for all the sin in my life. I confess and ask you, Lord, to please come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. 
And Father, as your word says that where two or three or more, you're here. I ask you, Lord, to revive each and every one who hears this word today. I ask you, Father, to minister to their spirits. May they learn to walk with you. Teach them your language. Teach them how to worship you. Teach us how to walk with you, Lord. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our hearts. Your word says, how much more shall I give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We ask you, Lord, to fill us with your Holy Spirit. May the word of God be with you. May he protect you. And may the blood of Jesus cleanse us. In Jesus' name we praise you and thank you, Lord. Amen. I, uh, I need to share something with you guys. I, I just forgot it, but I know you're here, but I want to remind myself because I want to share it on Sunday. Uh, I don't want to forget. Um, I think it was about two weeks ago or so. I, after service, I stepped into my office and uh, I just walked in and I sat down. And then somebody came and picked a $100 bill. And he said, he was left, they slipped it through the door in my office there. And I uh, said, okay, usually. Uh, they do that, but they always will put it in an envelope, so I know f- is this for the church. So I said, what is this? Nobody's done this before. It's not in an envelope, so I knew they were trying to give me uh, uh, something. Uh, so I gladly took the $100 and put it in my wallet. And uh, then on Sunday, I was sitting back there, and uh, it was after the message we were praying. And I was praying in the spirit. And I saw my wallet. And I saw the $100 bill. And uh, there was a young man sitting close by. And the spirit of God said, give him that $100. And I said, "Uh, okay. I I got up. No, I think the person was, the one who was teaching was still teaching. And I got up and uh, I said, Angela said, look, whatever you want to do, wait until I said, no, I can't do that. I got to go. So I called the young man and I went to my office and then I gave him the hundred dollar bill. He threw his head back. He said, I was the one that put that hundred dollar bill in. (laughs) He couldn't believe I was able to pick him up. To, to give the hundred, but I have, I had no idea, and uh, in my mind he needed the hundred dollars more than I than I did. So I, I said, he said, well I'm gonna give it to someone. I said, no no no, God wants you to have it, and more will come after that. Uh, what I've learned, and it says she spoke about that today. Once I feel like God speaking, there's got to be immediate response. Sometimes you wait, and he'll not talk. To, he won't talk to you anymore, and you complete. And then if you forget totally, you've lost that blessing. So I really will encourage you uh, when you're praying in the spirit, God does speak to you. And if he does, when he does that, don't hesitate. And you don't need to listen to anybody. You just know this is it because. You can meet somebody that tells you, you want counsel, don't tell you not to do it. You fail. Abraham didn't say, I'm not going to preach. Abraham didn't tell Sarah, I'm going to kill your son, Isaac. If he had, there would be a real war in the house. So when God speaks to you, it doesn't make sense. Don't talk to people because it won't make sense to them. So just do what he asks you to do. God bless you. I hope I can share this. If you're watching online, listen, but I'll probably remind me on Sunday. I get busy and I'll forget. I want to share it with everybody. God bless. Good night. Great job.